And Karen joins us now. This is her uh, first interview since Christmas and yes. um, your brother being sentenced to 15 years mm -hmm. had a big impact on you, didn't it? You decided to waive your anonymity, which you had a right to yeah. um, as, as a victim. Um, how was Christmas? How was the New Year? Sometimes those can be kind of, you know, as they say, triggering events, can't yeah. they? Yeah, do you know, it was fairly quiet, actually, and I thought, I think after the court case, I just thought I would snap, not back into Karen mode, because I'd never want to go back to the old Karen, but I just thought I'd snap back and everything would be fine, and mm -hmm. I could just celebrate and be happy, and, and it's really strange, you just can't, and I think I underestimated the actual healing process, which starts when it's all over, not even before when you've come out with it that's not when healing starts it's for me it was it's over as in the court case and the mm. sentencing and now i feel like i'm just digesting and just mm. coming to terms with it so it's fairly quiet nothing how do you feel about him your brother to be honest with you i don't really feel anything i know people say i've, I've you know said he was I describe him as a monster and stuff, but I don't even, I just don't, I don't have any anger. There's no anger there anymore. There just isn't anything. So I'm not, if I wake up angry every day, then it's just not going to help anyone. So I just, I think I probably just feel numb about him, to be honest with you. I don't feel anything. How much, Karen, of your behaviour, all the selfies, all the stuff that everyone, became, you know, got to know you for and had lots of opinions about, how much of that, looking back, do you think may have been driven by what was happening in your head yeah. related to this really awful abuse? I would say 100%. And at the time, if, if I was sat here, say, two years ago when I was doing, <coughs> excuse me, crazy selfies and you said, Karen, you know, you're in politics, you shouldn't be doing this, I would sit here and think you was crazy. I thought everyone else was completely wrong and I was fine. And now when I look back, it's like, my word. You know, it was just, it's awful, really, when I look back. I didn't realise. I was in the moment, and so it would be 100%, absolutely. What do you mean? What is the link between the two, do you think? I think it was just trying to prove that, you know, I was wanted, that people liked me, and just validation that I was normal, despite what going through. Do you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. think it was just approval like yeah do you know what this has happened but i can still be a woman i can still feel good about myself mm. and i think it was more i just needed someone to say yes karen do you know what you are this and you are that i mean people obviously didn't know what i went through and i think it was more a confidence and insecure was it um waving your anonymity was that also an important part of letting people know who you really are because you felt like your public behavior was driven by something mm. that people didn't know about yeah i mean there's two reasons i mean that was the, the main reason because i think now people are like oh gosh that really makes sense and mm. they understand and i now understand looking back my behavior wasn't um right but also i think it was it's coming out for other people as well, isn't it? And it's not an easy thing to do. And sibling abuse is actually quite common, but we don't really read of it as much. And when I first came out, it was like, no, your brother, no, a few years older than you, don't be crazy. And because it's not really spoke about enough, so it was just more, it does happen and it is out mm. there and, you, you know, it's, it's not right. Now, you're working with NAPAC, which yes. is the um, survivor's charity for victims of abuse, and they've released this statistic, which is that they were inundated with calls before Christmas. Yes. Particularly, I'm sure, in the wake of what, you know, you had uh, talked about, but also the football abuse yeah. uh, scandal as well. Um, they were only able to answer a handful of those calls. Yes. How, you're working with them. How important is it <laughs> that this is taken much more seriously, much more money is put into it? And what are the problems when people try and get help, do you think? I think definitely there needs to be more money put there because some people unfortunately have the attitude well it was so many years ago mm. don't bring up the past don't worry about it but then when you look at me for an example in your adulthood you just don't cope mentally and you do crazy things some people might turn to drugs alcohol i turn to social media so it really does have a long-lasting effect and in the cause that they're trying to take over ten thousand people tried to ring and the courage just to tell someone and that might have been the only time where they want to pick up the phone and say yeah, i'm going to tell someone if they can't get through Mm. I try to think what you know that they could do afterwards and it is important because then you've got the effects of if you don't have more support and helplines then you're probably going to go down the mental illness route and then it's more strain here so I think just mm. help at the beginning will just save so much pressure elsewhere and I want to ask you because I I follow you on social media yes and 
I see some of the comments that you still receive, mm -hmm. and particularly in the wake of, of, of the court case and what happened. How do you deal with people still being critical of I you? I just completely ignore it. It doesn't, it doesn't even entertain my emotions for a single minute. And really? I just, genuinely? Is oh, yeah, genuinely. Speaking? Oh, no, absolutely not. But I mean, I block them, but somehow they still manage to tweet uh, replies. But I just think if you're a human being and your only pleasure in life is attacking someone, then it just says more about them than me. Well, it's a good attitude to have. Mm -hmm. And it's good to talk to you this morning. Karen, thank you so much thank for you. coming in.